horizontal curves are a necessary component of our roadways, however, they tend to be associated with a disproportionate number of severe crashes. In Kentucky, approximately 20% of all crashes are on curves. Approximately 40% of all fatal crashes are on curves. The average crash rate for horizontal curves in the United States is about three times that of other types of highway segments. One of the keys to reducing these numbers is setting appropriate curve advisory speeds. The combined use of advanced curve signing with an advisory speed plaque reduces crashes by 22%. The appropriate curve advisory speed is the maximum safe and comfortable speed for the curve. Procedures for setting curve advisory speeds are addressed in the National Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, or MUTCD. This ensures that curve advisory speeds are consistently set in each city, county, and state around our nation. This is vital for driver expectancy and a key to reducing crashes. Ken Agent is a research engineer with the University of Kentucky. He will discuss the importance of setting appropriate curve advisory speeds and show us the method most used by highway agencies around the nation to determine those speeds. One major importance of all your traffic control devices is that you want to have consistency across the country. And there's one method that's used across the country to set the appropriate advisory speed. If you set the advisory speed inappropriately, for example, too high, if you tell a driver they can drive through a curve at 40 miles per hour, but actually it should be 30 miles per hour, and there is an accident there, then you have liability issues because you have violated the driver's expectancy. You've given him wrong information. So we want to be consistent and uniform in setting an appropriate advisory speed. The advisory speed is supposed to be a speed at which is safe and comfortable for a driver to proceed through a curve. The device that we use to set an advisory speed on curves is called a ball bank indicator. The traditional version, the mechanical version, called a slope meter, is this device I'm showing here. And this is how it works. There is a bubble in this device. You can see that the first thing we want to do is, in the vehicle, set it where it's at zero. And you can see the bubble moves as you drive around the curve. Section 2C.08 of the MUTCD gives guidelines for use of the ball bank indicator. 12 degrees of ball bank or less is allowed for speeds of 35 miles per hour. 14 degrees of ball bank or less is allowed for speeds of 25 or 30 miles per hour. 16 degrees of ball bank or less is allowed for speeds of 20 miles per hour or less. These speeds are the driver's actual speed on the curve and not necessarily the regulatory speed limit. So, for example, if I went around the curve at 20 miles per hour and I went up to a reading of about, and you look at the center of the bubble, about 13, then that's okay for that curve. Then I drive through five miles per hour faster. I drive through now at 25 miles per hour. And if I go at 25 miles per hour and it goes up to 17, that is above my level that it should be. So therefore, the advisory speed for this example would be 20. The next device we're showing you is called a digital ball bank indicator. You want to mount it level in your vehicle and calibrate it. And then you, when you drive through the curve, it will give you the degrees printed out or shown digitally. And when you get above a certain level, this device actually allows you to know that you're above the appropriate level because you set an alarm angle and you'll hear this noise. This tells you that the speed you're driving is inappropriate for the curve. And now I want to show you a version you can use on your phone. And this is what the app looks like. At the top, it shows your speed that you're driving through the curve. It also shows you your deflection angle. In the lower right portion of the screen, it shows you a map giving you your location on the roadway. In this series of test runs, you can see how the Ball Bank app works. To determine a curve advisory speed, we would first mount the ball bank indicator to our vehicle dash, making sure that it is on a level section of the parking lot. The ball bank indicator should be reading zero degrees. It's best to use a passenger vehicle and to check the air pressure in your tires for consistent results. The first test run will be at the relatively slow, constant speed of 30 miles per hour, following the curve alignment as closely as possible. As we round the curve, you can see the ball start rolling to the left, and it registers a ball bank reading of 12 degrees. 
This is less than the 14 degrees allowed for speeds of 25 and 30 miles per hour. Therefore, 30 miles per hour is a safe speed. The speed for each test run should be increased in five mile per hour increments. So for the second test run, we'll be traveling at 35 miles per hour. This time the ball bank reading is 16 degrees, four degrees more than the maximum 12 degrees allowed for speeds of 35 or higher. The third test run is at 40 miles per hour. This higher speed registers an even higher ball bank reading of 19 degrees. Since the 35 and 40 miles per hour tests both exceeded the maximum allowable 12 degrees for speeds of 35 or higher, the maximum safe speed for the curve is 30 miles per hour, and this is where the advisory speed would be set. Each direction of travel could have a different rate of super elevation. Given this, you should test each direction because it's often difficult to drive the exact radius of the curve and keep the vehicle at a constant speed it's suggested that at least three test runs be performed in each direction. The mechanical ball bank indicator and the digital ball bank indicator are supported as established engineering practices. The use of the ball bank app is not currently supported by established engineering practices. As such, the best devices to use are the mechanical or digital ball bank indicators.